Um, I would like to make a, a, a very short introdu introduction, just throwing some ideas for, for the debate afterwards. Um, can I have the screen, please? Aye, okay. Um, so I'm uh, working at uh, IMAL in, in Brussels, so, so very quickly. It's a center for art, for the art, contemporary art focused on new media, and also a media lab and a, a workspace for artists. Okay, now, um, what I would like um, to think about, um, what's going to happen in the next five years or in the next 10 years? Um, and you know, we know that technology is part of the uh, infrastructure that is defining our social and cultural life. Of course, so social and cultural life is defined by many other things, but technology is really important. And what impact of, on the future of the uh, urban landscape, the city life, the urban media, the urban communities will technology have? And what kind of new forms of participation experiences for people in public space? And for me, there are two main technologies uh, which are interesting here. It's uh, the individual screen that is all the mobile technology linked uh, with uh, uh, positioning uh, and global next networks and the collective screens that is what it, we call media facade urban screens. Um, and I'm really surprised to see the gap between the two. Um, and if we remind uh, some of the talks of yesterday or of this morning, we see that there is uh, uh, an incredible difference between the two, the two worlds, mobile device and media facade. Okay, I've just listed some uh, differences here. You can probably add uh, many other ones and uh, uh, formulate them in a much nicer way. Uh, but we see that indeed there is uh, an, incredible, an incredible gap and the uh, mobile ecosystem is developing so fast uh, is uh, taking so much uh, in our life, uh, in our social life, and is uh, being uh, in the urban environment, is playing such a role uh, that indeed, uh, what, um, how is this going to, to evolve in, in the next year? Uh, will the physical public space be disconnected from the digital world? Uh, will, will we have people working in the cities just looking at their smartphones and not looking anymore at the urban landscape or the urban screens or their neighborhoods. Huh? Um, and how can we reduce this gap between mobile device and, and the urban environment, the media facade and so on? First, well, do we have to reduce this gap? For me, I think it's important uh, that uh, the urban environment, the media facade become more friendly, open, participatory, less the symbol of institution. And it's really very important that the mobile ecosystem is linked with the physical uh, uh, space, with the tangible realities, uh, and so on. And so how can we create hybrid spaces? So as we are in a panel about technology, uh, what kind of technological evolution could help? Um, we know that there are going to be many, many evolution. I've just listed some of them here. What I would like to go, it's through some, some ideas, some projects, okay, and try to imagine what could be the future. Uh, so for instance, in Brussels, we have this uh, nice Dexia Tower, uh, which was, you know Dexia, huh? the, the huge uh, Belgium-French bank, which is nearly in bankrupt. Um, they've built this nice building uh, in the center of Brussels, which was, which was indeed one of the first big media facade, and now it's switched off, of course, uh, because a bank is not doing any more anything cultural. Uh, so they play low profile, of course. Um, in, two in 2001, we had this project uh, from uh, the Computer Chaos Club in Berlin, Blinken Light, um, which was a do-it-yourself uh, uh, media facade um, where people could interact with it with uh, SMS. Um, in 2010, we, we built our own media facade, probably much uh, quicker, much smaller, but much quicker than 10 years ago, uh, using uh, LED, uh, cheap Chinese uh, um, spotlights, DMX, and uh, open software like processing. 
uh, we can deploy this facade in one afternoon. Um, what will happen in five years? Um, maybe we, everybody will be able to deploy uh, a media facade anywhere, anytime, to display any content. Maybe flex lead curtains will be as affordable as fitted carpet. Or maybe there will be other technology, I don't know. Um, uh, in 2005, we had, uh, for instance, this project from uh, Democracia El Perro in, in Spain, uh, the virtual demolition device. What was it? Uh, it was a mobile projector, uh, uh, a big mobile, uh, a, a big uh, barco projector uh, put in a car, and which was, uh, the car was driving in the city and was projecting on building uh, explosions. So, for instance, in Brussels, they did it uh, on the AU Commission main emblematic building. Um, and in 2017, what we will have? Uh, maybe uh, we will have uh, very cheap, powerful uh, projectors. In 2003-2007, we have uh, uh, the Troika Ranch Collective in the UK, uh, which designed this mobile, uh, this device to project uh, uh, messages from uh, your mobile phone, the SMS guerrilla projector. Uh, and uh, now we have mobile um, with built-in projectors. So we see that the mobile can go into uh, the urban space. Um, and for instance, we have this uh, about graffiti. Uh, we have this uh, from the graffiti research lab in the US, uh, the laser stencil in 2006 with the laser, um, where they project uh, um, any kind of graffiti on buildings. Of course, it's not permanent. In 2009, we have uh, Mobile Lenin, which is a guy from indeed the school, uh, who designed this mobile mobile spray application, uh, where you can indeed uh, create your own graffiti with your mobile and see them on any facade, uh, on any wall. Of course, it's not permanent. But maybe in 2017, we will have uh, wall painting robots designed by some hacker collective. Why not? It's not so far, and it's not so impossible. Um, then I would like to introduce you uh, a project that we, we are currently doing in, in Brussels. I have invited uh, Ulrich Fischer with uh, uh, his project Walking the Edit. Um, and it's a project who, link, which is linking mobile uh, uh, phones, uh, the art of walking, territory, and cinema. So indeed what's happening is that uh, the user or the, the spectator uh, uh, of the film to come and uh, create its own movie by walking in the territory with his smartphone, uh, with a GPS, and then uh, its walk through the territory is defining the movie that he will see. In a way, uh, what's happening is that by walking in the territory, it's com getting or collecting uh, media which were being shot before uh, about the stories of the places where it's working. And uh, um, so in a way, uh, it's uh, what is, you can call database cinema. It's algorithmic cinema because uh, there is a, a software engine which according to uh, the log of your works uh, creates a unique movie. Um, and it's uh, locative media also. So I like this project because uh, it's connecting um, this mobile ecosystem uh, with the real experience of the territory, and at the end, uh, a user unique end product, that is a movie uh, that the, the user is generating through his work. So what we are currently doing in Brussels, uh, we are producing in this summer um, in, all, in the neighborhood of Imal, that is in the center, uh, we've asked uh, seven artists um, to, to go and shoot um, small uh, media clips uh, all in the streets with people 
And all these clips, uh, I think it's are about 1,000 now, are being put in a, in a database, are being tagged uh, with metadata and so on. And then in September, we will have an exhibition where people can go with smartphone and discover the territory um, in a different way. So that's some ideas for the debate to come. Uh, and now I would like to introduce our speaker, Stefan. Thanks. So, hello everybody. Thank you, E, for the introduction. Thank you, Mina, for the invitation. My name is Stefan Mittelberg. I'm from Ars Electronica Future Lab. I, I think it's really, it's really hard to catch up on all that, what we see the last one and a half days. It's so great, so very interesting. And uh, since we have only a few minutes, I tried to uh, create a small statement, what I think it's... Uh, kind of important or could be interesting to to think at if we design or create new media, media art pieces, media facades uh, in, in future. Let me start with this um, picture. What we see here is uh, a nice uh, cafe in Berlin. It's so clear, I mean, we, we're doing that all. We're sitting in a cafe, we're doing our, our work, our business. There are a lot of people sitting there they even don't have their offices anymore. They say, okay, it's fine for me. I, I'm sitting there and working for a half day in the, in the cafe and I do all my business. I run my international business from this cafe. So on one end I say, okay, that, that's, that is like it is and it is good. <coughs> and there are a lot of voices say, wow, we're sitting in a cafeteria and we don't chat anymore to each other. But I think just a sidestep, it was never better. So. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's a cafe in, in uh, Vienna, 1900. But let me go back to here. I mean, the, oops, um, the next thing of our behavior, the reason I'm showing this, this in the next slide is it's, it's um, so clear that we start to use all this technology in a very, like, um, intuitive way. It got so common for us to use all this. I mean, I don't want to go further to this uh, device, to these devices. We had it already like in almost every talk, but uh, I was really kind of surprised about the success of the smartphones. I mean, we heard yesterday 40% 40, 40 of all the users using it before going up to bed. I, I'm, I have no idea. Maybe it's because of the touching, you know, it's like, oh, so whatever. But um, if we look at our behavior and all the changings which, which happened in the last few years, and if we then look up all these uh, topics or all these um, installations, what we are creating, what we have out, out there in our urban space, um, we have all this, I mean, I don't want to go further into it, it's, the time too small, but I, I kind of... Um, try to organize and, and separate it for myself and then okay it's we have um, the huge architectural label we have uh, the if you look out we have also have like fountains we have sculptures and um, 
but it's also a discussion then what is media exactly? What can it be? Is it water? Is it steel? Is, is that also a media? But I think um, it's, it's not the way we should, we should act in future. I mean, I bet if we have this um, 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 LED wallpapers and so on, we will create a lot of buildings like we see it here on, on, the, bar, on the Bayer Tower. Um, all these fountains, I think, and all the, the sculptures will, will be there, and it's good. And, but I think if we are um, going to design new art pieces, new media art pieces, new facades, we, we really should, um, I think, take care to design stuff which is responsive, responsive in, in, in different ways. Uh, responsive to the environment, like I love this, this example from the Rolling Bridge in London, or it can be also like uh, that candidate with his facades, um, which are responsive like to the, to the nature, to the wind, which is very great. It uh, should be, I think, um, be interactive in that way that we have kind of uh, implicit interaction. It should be responsive to the passerby, or it could be resp responsive to the passerby, like we see it here in these works for Art and Com, or I personally really love the wooden mirror of, of Daniel, from Daniel Rosen. Or, I mean, if you look at this uh, interactive wall from, from Hyperbody and, and Festo, I mean, this, this vision of, of creating kinetic architecture or responsive architecture to, to people, what will this bring all? Oh. Then, of course, to the user, to, to give them the chance to, to have this explicit interaction. We have here a very nice piece, the railings by Andrew Schoben, where he passed by with a stick and it played a song. Or uh, the other piece, I mean, we had uh, already um, Computer Cars Club, the uh, blinking lights, another piece, which I always have to say happened earlier. Uh, one year, it was uh, done in Linz. It was Clickscape by Stadtwerkstatt. Um, of course, um, I think it's, it's very um, important to have this kind of systemic, systemic approach. What I mean with that is that uh, we should create works which are like um, show somehow this, that a lot of things are going on behind, uh, behind let's say let's, a lot of things are going on in, in a virtual world and we should bring somehow them to the audience to an, in, a, in a way to a converging space. A nice approach is, of course, the telematic approach. I mean, what technologies will we have? I mean, I don't want to uh, say the same like Eve, but uh, we had already very nice projects in this, in this telematic way. The one is this global string, uh, which made sound. Uh-huh, no sound. Yeah, anyways, uh, it's, um, you could like play it like a, um, uh, a string from a, from a piano, and you could hear it in Rotterdam and the other way back. Okay. Now, I think, I think it's my presentation okay. because of the sound. Um, go once back. The other piece was um, bump, each other, bump into each other. It was a, a, a bridge, maybe you know it. it. One was in Budapest, the other one was in Linz. And if you ran over the, the, um, the wooden boards, lift it or, or go, uh, went down. And so when, you, when I made a step, it went down and the same happened in Budapest. So we, you had a kind of virtual connection between the citizens who ran over this, this little bridge. Very nice installation. And um, of course, it has to be responsive to a virtual com uh, community. It's, uh, I mean, just two uh, examples. The, on, the, on the left one, this example is, uh, it was um, a Second Life piece, which uh, we put it into the, into the real space. So we built the same space, then it was uh, built in, in Second Life, and the people could interact between uh, the virtual world, the virtual space, and, and the real space. On the right side, we see the Telezone, which was an um, um, industrial robot, and it allowed people like um, go on a website and build their own architecture and vice versa. Um, there was an interaction between uh, these people. So, in general, I think whatever uh, or 
whatever on, on technologies we will develop in the next years. It, we saw, if you look uh, back in the, in the past, everything developed or increased so fast, and I think the same will happen in the next few years, next 10, 20 years. And um, I think it will be very important to, to create kind of intelligent, responsive spaces, environment, which are like um, responsive to a collective and also to individuals. And I'm not sure if this will be our future. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> I stop here with this retro picture. Thank you. So hello everybody, my name is Kai Kuikkaniemi and I come from Helsinki Institute for Information Technology which is a joint institute between uh, Aalto University and uh, University of Helsinki. Uh, it's, uh, we are roughly 200 researchers and it's uh, mostly uh, sort of, how should I describe it, it's uh, hard science so it's uh, most of the people are doing algorithmic level analysis on different kind of uh, different kind of sort of uh, how to utilize computer systems in uh, in, uh, in for example uh, medicine and so on. But then we have 50 people in a program called Network Society. A uh, bunch of people are lawyers and then uh, economists and uh, social psychologists. But then then uh, there are people like me who have a sort of engineering and art background. So for example, this uh, particular room. Uh, it's quite, uh, I'm, uh, how should I say, it's, uh, I've been here quite often, so I am actually a student of the School of Arts and here actually the cinema department. So this Sampohola was here just doing some experimentations a couple of days ago. Uh, my research is mostly focused on uh, understanding the big screen experience in a sense that how audience can participate, whether it's a big screen like in a cinema space or in a different kind of conference spaces, or whether it's a sort of interactive uh, touch screens and so on. But uh, now for the sake of demonstration and understanding what I do, I hope you, most of you have your laptops and mobile phones on already, but please go to that address, so screen.io slash urban media. And I, I will show you some of, the, some of the tricks that we are playing around with. But meanwhile you are signing up, I will, I will just give you a couple of backgrounds on a sort of thoughts that I have been playing around. And I was quite happy to hear from Stefan that uh, he sort of highlighted this responsive uh, side of uh, designing these uh, media facades and urban media in general. And uh, instead of... Uh, using the phrase responsive or adaptive or interactive, I've decided to use concept of participation uh, to highlight the sense that uh, there must be some kind of motivation why people are uh, interacting with the system and there is some kind of design call of what people are looking for from the participation. And okay, so we are 14 already inside. But sort of how should I, how I see the sort of whole setup is that uh, we, are, we are dealing with quite fundamental uh, issue in in terms of computing, sort of co coming from the computing science background. So uh, early 70s, 60s, there was the era, uh, the blooming era of personal computing, which of course was highlighted in the 80s and 90s and so on. When once we got the network, uh, sort of internet established and we came into the era of network computing. And now we are sort of going towards the steps of pervasive computing and everybody is talking about uh, ubiquitous uh, systems and how how computers are everywhere and we are interacting with our mobile devices here and there. And, uh, and these th different illustrations I have here, they are sort of, uh, with this illustration I want to sort of establish the difference between these different uh, computing paradigms. And, uh, and these big screens and interacting, I think that this picture illustrates quite nicely uh, the fact that when, when people are sitting in the same space, and, and they're using basically one computer system, one interface together. It's really fundamentally different situation from these three other things. And we should uh, learn totally different design paradigms for that. And here, the, of course, the core, uh, core sort of uh, reason why that kind of thing uh, would be important is the co-experience. So uh, we want to be together uh, for many reasons. 
perhaps the social level is that the one that we acknowledge the best and uh, it's quite common for us that we, we are social creatures and when we are together with other people we, we behave differently and basically we need uh, need other people to be around, but most enjoyable experiences are also the social experiences. But in addition to that, we have of course also inactive level. In a very uh, rudiment uh, psychophysiological uh, level, uh, we are synchronizing each other in, in either in sort of uh, different kind of uh, EDA, ETG levels and so on. So we are actually in HIT, we have been doing studies on how biosynchron synchrony happens in different kind of mediated experiences. And this is really the fundamental sort of uh, notion about the magic of co-experience. And it starts not only from the social interaction, it starts from the really psychophysiological effects. So, and then, of course, uh, with the advent of internet, we have the collective action level, and we, we are talking about crowdsourcing and so on. So this is the power that we can facilitate with uh, these kind of co-located computing systems. And uh, then just one illustration, that the last illustration I want to show about the sort of uh, theoretical framework side that I've been pondering about is that uh, it's quite different whether we are designing for, uh, I think that everybody of us understands that it's quite different from designing for individual users or group users or then a crowd of users. We have seen uh, the exp uh, sort of explorations that we saw, for example, by Stefan and Yves, that there is like, you know, when, when the crowd is interacting, it's, uh, you're using different kind of design paradigms. But on, then on the other hand side, on the right side, uh, there are also, it's quite different from the computer system uh, design perspective, whether it's a just single installation, single big screen, or whether it's a complex computing system, or what I'm quite interested and mostly focused about this kind of man-machine hybrid. So the system is also, not only as a system that is standalone, but there is somebody operating the system actively, or on the other side. So there comes the factor of roles, that there is not only users and different kind of users, different kind of social interaction between users, but there are different kind of roles within the user, or there can be a sort of users behind the screen also, which is quite important. And actually now I'm user behind the screen because I can do different kind of tricks here. And let's see whether you have been, you know, talking with me anything here. Okay, just need to develop multi-threaded presentation speak type here. Yeah, that's true. We are talking about mostly when we are using this kind of tool, we are talking about uh, co-channeling, not back-channeling. Uh, if you do it in a right way, you are sort of supposed to be able to balance with the multi-threading. But most of this system, this is actually a commercial product. You can go to Mac App Store and you can download it there and start using it for your own presentation. So there is, we have been doing quite many different kind of experiments and we have new prototype systems coming, but this one is uh, quite quite uh, plain and simple and anybody can use it. But it's uh, mostly used, for example, this kind of multiple option questions. And this is perhaps a provocative questions and not really a something that uh, I'd assume any, anybody can clearly uh, articulate, but perhaps it, uh, it might uh, spring out some interesting discussion and perhaps highlights my perspective that, uh, that I think that the next steps uh, are already here in pretty many ways. We have fantastic technology available, but uh, whether we are sort of uh, able to utilize that technology, that's really the question. Uh, so how do we uh, find the means of scaling things up and making it really effective for the social processes we are ha have around us and in different kind of infrastructure around us? And uh, well, we seem to have 27 people inside and now 10 people have answered, so perhaps I will start showing already the results and uh, so perhaps this is uh, this is uh, something good to expect from this audience because we have we trust on ourselves but uh, but still yeah I think this for me uh, well I didn't mention that that I, I did actually my master's in uh, business strategy so I have a business background I did keep they tend to keep that hat also sometimes on even though I have the artistic background in the, on the side so. I would like to think about what, what is the ecosystem and how can we scale up already the technology that we have in hand. And perhaps the last thing that I would like to show to you, I think that the results are quite clear already, like the rest of them have to actually even answer. We, we got our one, one answer we were looking for. But uh, so uh, one sort of big prototype track besides, for example, this kind of participation systems that I've been developing and exploring is uh, is this uh, big multi-touch walls, and this one was in CPIT this year, but we have a similar installation now permanently also in, in Stockholm, 
uh, Berlin and here in Helsinki and uh, hopefully in Eindhoven also in next month. But uh, with this, um, this prototype, uh, well, it's based on the multi-touch technology that was developed in HIIT, and now it's a spin-off company quite successful called Multi-Touch OU. Uh, but this, uh, with this uh, interface, I've been exploring how you can do different kind of adaptive paradigms uh, put inside the bubble framework. So using bubble as the core sort of metaphor interaction instead of windows. And here I'm explaining the back end of the system, and here especially important part is that uh, we were using Kinects uh, to adapt the screen already before people were touching it. So it wasn't only touch interaction, but it was also remote interaction. And now we are developing, of course, different kinds of uh, mobile interfaces for the bubble screen. But, but yeah, so we had three different Kinects uh, integrated as one. 3D model and so on, and it was this was a practical use. So there was most people were uh, presenting with the wall, having their own presentations. Uh, unfortunately, there's some kind of alpha layer or the sort of for some reason I, we seem to have a video display problems with the system. But but yeah, anyways, I hope you can see it. But it was actually currently how these kind of screens are used is for presenting presenting different kind of stuff. But perhaps that's the end note from my side, and we can. At the pole, yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's here. Yeah, yeah. Ah, I didn't anticipate that the artist, artist uh, would get so many percentages on how the <laughs> visualizations. Sorry? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks a lot, Guy. That's really, really interesting. Um, and um, indeed, it, it shows that there are a lot of possibilities for participatory, responsive uh, interaction um, with people and, 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 and the public. And but how do you would you see this extended to uh, an urban environment? Um, yeah, it uh, depends on. A yes, to say it shortly, uh, definitely, I, I believe that this kind of things uh, can be uh, placed in the urban environment, but not necessarily on permanent basis. It's uh, these kind of systems are designed especially for the different kind of events. And situation. I don't see any problem that they wouldn't be located in urban spaces, but uh, uh, it's more questions that uh, that how do we design the events in future? Because I think that that's also something that is uh, going through quite a big transformation. Because uh, not only like uh, entertainment events, like the music events, they, there is a big transformation in that side, oh, but especially in professional events, which uh, tended to be more about static uh, presenting and uh, and then people listening, but th with different kind of uh, urban media technologies, we can uh, spread the events all around and make them much more, uh, much more engaging and more, much more participatory. So that's that's what I'm, what I think that it's not really coming. It's not only how how do you place the technology, but uh, in terms of physical uh, sp places, but uh, how do you design the events? And and indeed, uh, that's one of the problem of. Um current technology for, for urban screens and media facade, it's that they are usually permanent uh, infrastructures, uh, expensive to set up. Uh, um, and uh, for instance, uh, Stefan, at the Future Lab, what do you see as possible progress uh, to make much more ephemeral uh, facades, engaging people when they want, uh, and so on? Mm. I see. I see different ways here. I mean, when you when you say this, and the first thing which comes to my mind is like uh, not only like the technologies like mobile phones and so on are like getting more more common for us. It's also like um, producing things is is getting more um, normal for us. I mean, if you let me bring one example. If you look at the laser printer in the 90s, yeah, it was like uh, 
a super thing and everybody was like, wow, I don't can afford a laser printer and now everybody has it ho at home for 100 euros. So if we go now uh, and at the next step, let's say a 3D printer or a laser cutter, something like that, it's like, okay, um, it was 25,000 euros five years ago and now it's like 7,000 euros or and there, I mean, a lot of um, ideas how to make them yourself and so if you look further in this in this whole technology um, steps and I think there will be a, a revolution on, on that and I think we will be able to produce things uh, in a in a very um, big scale I mean it's, it's already kind of possible to to build very nice structures facades like and students are doing that they go to the laser cutter and, and just cut it and, and make super nice structures. It's only like on, on that end, but it's a good example for myself to, to see, okay, um, there will be a lot of things possible. But I'm, last sentence, just I'm, I'm more afraid actually of, of the kind of this uh, afraid. Um, it's, uh, it will be a kind of revolution if, if the whole production can like be sprayed out on, 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 the, on, the, on the people, it will change a lot, I think. Yeah, probably, uh, uh, and then we, we will see if there is an explosion of uh, um, technology and means to, to express oneself uh, on a large scale in the public space, then we will probably see new regulation. Uh, and, uh yeah, definitely. It's uh, uh, hopefully also not only restrictive regulation, but also sort of uh, enabling and, uh, and sort of how should I say it? Regulations that um, push uh, different kind of organizations to sort of establish themselves in the city space, uh, meaning that the city space would, would be used more as a sort of uh, uh, space where people um, display what kind of social action is happening around and sort of uh, make the city space more trans transparent in, in terms of social interaction and social activism and so on. I think I think about the regulations. It's uh, um, I think they it have to be regulated somehow. But I think also the whole regulations they will change like uh, like the technology. I mean, if we if we build our house or if we build a um, skyscraper, everything is regulated. Everything is totally clear what's allowed and what's not, and it's clear why you're doing it and why not, and it's clear why you use whatever a steel pole instead of whatever wooden pole things like that and I think it will be the same with, with, with that and it will be maybe we will be afraid and we will have hard regulations and maybe we then see we'll see okay it's not that tough then we will loosen it probably whatever but there will be definitely regulations I think I think there was a question over there There is no mic for... I think that is more like a comment uh, regarding the, that... The yeah, uh, the, the, ma the, the gentleman's name is Pranav Mystery, but uh, like the gentleman reminded us kindly, it's called the Sixth Sense Project. And uh, uh, this guy used to be a, a student at MIT, and he also has a, uh, a talk on the whole Sixth Sense project on uh, TED.com. But isn't uh, the Sixth Sense project is, uh, is clearly um, sort of focused on the personal uh, 
mostly on personal area and how you are displaying information within your own body and sort of augmenting your body, body sort of in, in sort of a performative fashion. Uh, it's not there. I, I didn't at see that much a sort of social expression, uh, uh, like a collective action there in, in in his thinking. But it's it's definitely a really clear, uh, interesting and uh, and sort of good packaging of technology and uh, good provocation on what go, what you can do in, in with technology. But a little bit different in my, my sense that because it's not really about uh, about the media space or or collective action. Are there any other questions in, in the audience? Well, so m maybe um, it's time to, to conclude. Huh? Or Stefan and Kai, you want to, to add something? I mean, I, I just um, in this discussion or in this, um, what you told also about uh, mass interaction or mass uh, participatory, it's, it's a very interesting field. I mean, um, one one example um, we are doing the the Linzer Klangwolke, which is like translated as the sound cloud. This year is done by by the Future Lab, and we had um, we have uh, like four thousand LED letters, like paper letters with LED inside, and we had to challenge. Okay, what 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 to do? I mean, we we want to control these LEDs. And you, of course, discuss all the technologies you have. Say, okay, let, let's put, do it somehow with mobile phone. Yeah, how? Okay, let's do it with wireless line. Yeah, but okay, it's, it's so like expensive then. I mean, if you have like wireless line, then build um, receivers on wireless line who can control switch on and off an LED strip. It's, um, it's, it's nonsense, actually. And I mean, in the end, we found out we can do it by radio. We, we build it, uh, our own radio station and we build it um, FM receivers and so we can control it but it's it's always a big challenge on the technology uh, in, in every case I mean you had a good example here yes, I really liked it but in large scale or like in if you look uh, think in an urban scale it's like mm, I think we need another few years to develop yeah. cool things but, uh, but for instance it's uh, at the, the future lab uh, in the new building you you have this huge uh, facade along the Danube um, is this that's a good test case to make a participatory uh, experiment because uh, I suppose you can you have all the technology to connect it to uh, to the people yeah. Yeah, it's um, we have different strategies on, on our facade uh, one one f one strategy is we we decided to open it up like one hour every day so we created a small terminal which is sitting down on the Danube shore and you can go there and can for example uh, just plug in your mp3 player and blast your sound uh, across the Danube and have your visualizations on it the people love it it's like um, every day the people are standing down there waiting okay it's nine I can play now so this is this is one one thing and of course we're using like a mobile uh, uh, SMS and so on and we also um, created our own simulator uh, which we can which we give out to to the people to artists who can create uh, so they can create their own applications pretty easily and they just come back and let it go and of course there are a lot of um, like pieces which happened already there like students and yeah, I have to come to my point, so. <laughs> so we, we, we could, for instance, imagine uh, uh, a huge uh, poll um, organized on this facade wi with your system, Kai, with all the people on the on the Danube along the Danube River uh, voting for something uh, about on the municipality uh, policy? Sh sure, it's, uh, um, well, what, what, I, uh, what I'm calling, it's mostly like now you saw a simple poll, but you can imagine taking that further and how you can use different kind of statistical means. You are asking, asking different kind of questions and, and uh, slicing it up. You know, people are not really uh, answering only single simple polls, but they are sort of uh, engaged in a mass dialogue and so on. So it's, uh, it, it can be really a collective brainstorming session and try sort of means to try to understand where we, what's happening in this, uh, this community at the moment. 
but uh, uh, I don't know, know about the time time constraint. Did I understand the question right? But it's uh, just a sort of one one comment that I had about is that uh, in terms of design, what I realized is that. Uh, at least in our cases, the design of the front end has taken roughly 10% of the full design and effort on, on the system in order to make them effective, like, you know, to put more effort on the back end and try to sort of make that uh, sort of cap how do you transport the system to different places, how do you make them uh, uh, sort of uh, operation of the systems accessible and easy, and also how do you engage that in the different kind of social processes, not only like single events and so on. So, but mm. it really, I think that there the sort of, that's that's interesting part and there is a lot of challenges ahead. I'll see that we, we have to conclude science over there. Yes, we conclude. Uh, so the future is what we will do with it. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>